morning darling, morning Anne, Marie, morning Caroline. Who else have you got on? Say hello if you're there. Let me know who's there. Morning Eileen. Morning Abigail. Christine, morning. Hilary, morning. Morning Sharon. Morning Geraldine. Morning Devon Boy. <laughs> Buongiorno. <laughs> Buongiorno to you too. <laughs> Alright. Okay, is that all we've got this morning? Not many people. There's something apparently there's something wrong with um Facebook Live and not everybody can get on. I don't know if that's true or not. Um someone was somebody was telling me that there's a problem with it sometimes. Um if maybe you share it in other groups, then apparently it works better. I don't know how true that is. Um, but I'll have to look into that because I'm not quite sure. Morning, Suzanne. Who else have I got? Say hello if you're there. Just so I can say hello to you. And thank you for watching. Right, well today we're going to be doing um, the wreath, similar to the one that was on the photograph, but that one had a lot of very pink, um, I don't know what the, what the tree is, I want someone to try and find out what it is, I haven't had a chance to look it up yet. It's, um, it's a very pretty berry that's on the trees at the moment, and this grows down the bridle path where I live, and they look like little, I don't know, like little four leaf clovers I suppose, but they're pink they're pink and sometimes they're bright pink and sometimes they're dull pink and these ones are a bit duller today so it won't be quite as bright as the one in the picture but you can only work with what you've got so I'm going to work with these so if anyone knows what they're called what this tree is called then please put it on the screen we'd like to see what it is so that's that's the sort of main color in it really this sort of pretty pink um, and everything basically that I'm using today has been uh, taken from or cut from the bridal path. Now this is, um, it's like a wild, I would call it like a wild amaranthus. I don't know its name. Again, there's so many things that grow on the bridal path. I don't know all their names. Um, if anybody knows what it's called. Um, I think when it was in full colour, it was a reddy colour. So that made me think it was like a wild amaranthus. Um, and this grows all along the road where we live in Aylesbury. So, um, but now it's sort of um, drying out a little bit. It's gone a sort of nice sort of uh, browny, rusty colour. So I'd, I'd quite liked it and I thought it would be quite good for using in a wreath. So we'll use that. So that will be the main back of the um, uh, wreath. So we're going to use that. So it's like a wild amaranthus. I've got some privet berries and these are like black and green mainly the mainly sort of green uh bright green berries that are on the bushes at the moment morning karen um so we're going to use some of those and i've got a little bit of ivy berry my favorite one of my favorites there's a great filler for a wreath and obviously our lovely uh pink berries if anyone knows what they're called put it in the group so we can all look it up um otherwise i will look it up later but I didn't have a chance this morning. Had a late night last night. <laughs> so, but it was a good night. It was a good night. It was the first night at the pub since we'd all been ill. So um, we had a nice evening. And we're going away on Wednesday, so there won't be a live next week. But um, anyway, just to let you know. So those are what we're going to be using. And the wreath I'm using is the one that we did. Do you remember the one I made before? I showed you how to make the wreath before and this was just made from um, birch. Just birch. And it's literally just lots of bits of birch all tied together. Um, if you look in the, one of the previous, the, the one with the um, silk 
flowers in this I made that for, th for this so I'm just I've literally just taken the flowers off now because I've fed up looking at it on my gate and I've, I'm going to use this so um, it's not 100% even but it doesn't matter because when your um, when all your foliage is on it it will look lovely so some of these are sort of loose and they sort of I've just tied some on that are around the edge this is just as it was before really I haven't changed it this is exactly as it was before so that's the, uh, the basis of the wreath and that's all made from birch this one but you can buy them you can buy them already made if you don't want to make them up um, I noticed the lady down the road had a load of um, grapevines so you could use those they'd be really good so cut those off and just keep uh, going around and building a nice circle and just wrap it with twine or this one was tied with um, uh, cotton cotton twine okay morning carol so we're just going to use that basic wreath that we had before um, now my little bunches obviously i've made a load up because otherwise we will be here till christmas um, but i'm making them up using the I say this wild amaranthus, I think that's what it is. So you need two or three pieces of that. Maybe four, see how see how it looks. Three or four of that. Um, a piece of ivy, this is ivy berry on the front. And some of the privet berries on the front of that. So you're just building up little layers. And then our lovely pink berry. Has anybody found out what it's called yet? It'd be great to know what it is. Who knows what it is? So you just cut a piece of that. You can get rid of some of the leaves because otherwise you're not going to see the berries. So just get rid of the leaves that are sort of in front of the berries. Then that will show them off a bit better. Because you want to see the colour coming through. So just clip those off. So you can see you can see the berries a bit better so you've got your little bunch and then we want to wrap those in uh, I use um, a florist twine uh, a florist wire on a reel but you can use any type of wires you can use just cotton ties if you wish cotton uh, twine just grab it on one side, just do a couple to hold it first, cut some off, and then go all the way back, you want it nice and firm, so all the way back. So that's what you're after, you want these little bunches like this. Morning Linda. So we're doing a couple of those. So it's the amaranthus, or the wild, I'm calling it wild amaranthus, I think that's what it is. If anyone knows anything else that it's called, it just goes wild on the road here in uh, Buckinghamshire. And when it was in its prime, it was like like red, it just looks like red amaranthus. So I'm assuming it's like a wild amaranthus. Uh, we want a bit of ivy just to put on top. Get rid of anything where you're tying it, obviously. Uh, a little bit of the privet. Again, and this has got nice green berries that are, some of them are black as well, so it's quite nice. And then a bit of the the pink tree berries. So again, just put it all on, hold it, get rid of any of the foliage that's in front of the berries, so you can see the berries because you want to see the berries. It's a nice; they've got a nice sort of autumn tinge to the leaves. So leave some of them on, but don't get rid of all of them. So you want a nice little bunch like that. Get rid of any woody stems. Hold it tight and with your wire or your cotton tie, whatever you want to use. If you're being totally eco friendly, you wouldn't use wire, but I had wire here, so I'm just using it. Just enough to secure it, and you've got your little bunches. So, I'll do another one. Three, three pieces of this. This is just to bulk out and be your fluffy edge. A piece of um, morning Patricia, morning Elaine, morning Katrina, 
I think I said hello to everybody else. Linda Paulette. Morning. Um, so your ivy on the top. And a bit of the privet. This is really nice at the moment. lovely pink berry so just cut off depends how it's grown on the tree but I don't want all the woody bits so you've got your berries on the top you can use a bit more and again just get rid of any of the leaves that are hiding the pink this because you want that bit of colour to come through. There we go. And again, a little bit of wire just to secure it all. Hi, would you be able to spray foliage that you're using as as backing? Sorry, can't spell it. I don't know what he means, does it? Would you be able to spray foliage? Yeah, you could do, I suppose. It's quite dry. It's dry. Uh, but we're just trying to do a natural one today, so we're not really doing any sort of Christmassy, using lots of sprays and things. We're trying to be a bit more natural if we can. So this is more like an autumnal... Uh, wreath. So you've got your um, lots and lots of lovely sprigs and these are all going to go around your wreath. So let's get rid of this for a minute. So my, I, obviously I've got a, a, little, a little hook at the back of my, oops, I've got a little hook at the back of my um, wreath where I hang it up before so I'm going to start at the top there. So this, as I said, if you didn't miss, if you missed it before, morning Luke, this is um, a wreath that I made for a previous, um, a previous uh, wreath I made. So I'm just going to go on to that because I, I, I didn't have time to make another one. And to be quite honest, I wanted something different to go on my gate. So this is going to go on my gate. So we've got our lovely, <coughs> obviously I've made a lot more of these. <coughs> and now we're going to attach them. To the now, the first thing we do, I do one flat, one flat timber. So one flat to start with, and I'm just starting sort of at, at the top ish. So one flat on here, and then we're going to use your wire. This wire's going to play up today. It's going. This is a different one to what I usually use, but we'll see how it goes. So your first one, and then wire on. Around and just secure it basically where you tied it before, just going round. Yeah, this one isn't quite so strong as far, so that's how it's snapped. Now, but yeah, that's fine, doesn't it? And then with your next bunch, you're going to the side. So make sure your, your berries are on the front and then you're going to the side. And then you just attach your wire again. This one is snapped. This one might be a bit stronger. I'll use this one. So then you've got your first one which is laid flat and then your next one will be laid Your, attach your wire first, otherwise you're not going to have anything to pull against. So just attach your wire first. It's nice and strong. And then your next bunch is going to go to the side. So your first one is flat, 
the second one is to the side and just a couple of times round just to secure it. in the way I'm just to try and keep it clear just a couple of times so you've got one flat the next one at the side now this one is then going to go the opposite angle so you're going to the in, you're going to the inside this time around right. every wire about three times you want it To make sure it's secure. So go high up, go high up on the bunch. I want it to be secure. So do it like that. Morning mat. So you've got one flat, one to the outside, and then one to the inside. So the next one goes to the outside. Sorry, next one goes flat. So flat. So you've got flat, outside, inside, flat. Go around with these, wiggle it through. I've lost both the ends of my wire now. So I'll piece it staying on there. So you can see it's going to be a nice autumnal. So that one, so you get flat, outside, inside, flat. So next one's outside. So, flat, outside, inside, flat, outside. Go back to the original one. It's not quite as strong as one, but it's fine. So what we'll do is we'll just cut, just cut lengths off. So we've got outside. Touch your wire again. This happens sometimes with wire. It's a bit... Sentimental. Oh dear, it's not working today, is it? I don't think I should have got up this morning. <laughs> right, let's try it again. I'm just going to have to double over now because it's got caught. Just go right round anyway. Just need some wire to attach it. So that one was the outside. So now the next one will be on the inside. Inside. Use your wire if you can find it. How long do you think it would last? Oh, it should last for months. It won't. This is all. This is all natural from from in the on the bridal path. So it's it's all growing there naturally. So it's. Um, these are all things that will dry naturally anyway. So, right, I think we're back on track now. So now we want one in the middle. Change your wire again. And try and wind it through your, your nice twiggy bits on the side. Just Google the pink berry. Think it might be... Euonymus Felamon. Oh gosh, I can't even say it. Yes, probably right, Eileen. <laughs> I'll have a look at it later. It's growing right down the end in the, if you want to get some, it's growing right down the end um, in the, the new little orchard. So this time we're on the outside. About 
three, about three times should be enough. Get nice and tight. Then on the inside, Be easy if you when you first start if you start with one without all the um without all the bits around the edge but you could always add those in at the end if you wanted to okay so then this one is going to hide those mechanics in the middle so this one's going in the middle okay find your wire I'm just going to cut little bits of wire because these Reels are getting caught. They don't usually get caught, but probably cheap, cheaper, inferior products. Yeah, doesn't really matter as long as as long as the wire is going to attach. Start again. Hold it where you're starting it again. Just give it a nice little tug. So you can see the effect now that we're getting here now. So, so this time we've gone, so we're going to the right now on the outside. Inside, so move the wire down. Just hold it with one hand and feed the wire through with the other. One, two, three. So the next one is going on flat. I'm going to put it there because I think it looks better there. Sometimes you just have to jiggle it a bit sometimes if you want to. Because I, I don't want the next one being too high up. So I'm going to put that on there for now. But generally it's it's one flat, one right, one left. But sometimes if you use slightly thinner um, bunches or that you know there's not quite as much foliage in it, then sometimes you have to put it somewhere else. So don't worry. It's not the end of the world. Cut a bit more wire. Let's see if I can leave it on the what on the it's a nice day here today now, it's very really sunny. I hope you've got nice weather where you are. So things keep going in front of the uh Right, okay, we'll try and keep the reel short now. So this one's going to go in the middle. Just bring it down a bit. And again. <coughs> go down in between all your twigs. It's a bit more difficult when you've got the twigs on the side, as I said, but just sort of feed it through. Don't worry too much. You can always put some more twigs in at the end if you if you've got rid of a few. Right, so next one on the outside. So you can see it's coming along. Morning, morning, Catherine from New Zealand. Morning. Oh, off evening now, I should say. It's evening there, I should think. Three times. 
think the wire's been good at the moment. Right. So that was your outside, so now we're doing inside. Morning. Alright, yeah, good thing. Yes, thank you, yes. <laughs> Over time, I don't pull it too much, otherwise it will it will snap. And the next one on the outside. Do a little bit more. Uh, oh yeah, okay. Morning, Jane. Morning, Catherine. The weather here in Cork. Weather here in Cork City. Oh my gosh, sorry, the messages keep going up, keep moving. <laughs> Saturday evening. Yeah. What did you say about Cork? Working with the wire where it goes wrong, it's a nightmare. Yeah, it can be a bit, can be a bit of a nightmare, but it's with anything you just have to keep practicing I mean, I've been doing this a long time and it still happens to me so don't worry about it <laughs> right so now we're going inside you want to get that thickness on the inside the wire can be a bit of a nightmare but some people you'd say use the um, you know, like the garden tie that, that you might find that easier than wire I prefer wire in a way because it's it doesn't move. Um, sometimes the birds peck at the other twine, and it, and it gets broken. Oh, look, that's broken again. Now. That's not what I wanted. Yes, this is not very um, thick wire. This one I'm using here. So try and get a strong wire. They don't really have. You know, they must have different gauges of them, but to be quite honest, I just tend to pick them up and don't really look at them. So maybe I've put stronger ones up in the past. I don't know. It's just a cheap one I've picked up. Okay, just to give it a good few goes. Okay, so you can see the effect that we're getting. So this one is going to be in the middle now. This one's going flat. And just put the wire down through the through your twigs. Okay. Yes, I'm feeling much better. Thank you, Catherine. Yes. Hopefully we're going away this week. Uh, supposed to be going to Cyprus for the week. A very belated um, 60th birthday for my husband. He'll be 62 soon. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny, really. Um, yeah. But anyway, a few of the family are going now. So um, we haven't got the two villas that we had planned originally. Uh, we're just going to have one villa because some of uh, his family don't want to travel or they're not able to travel. So... Uh, yeah, it's, um, but yeah, we're looking forward to it. Can't wait. Thought of just lying on a sunbed is, uh, is a good feeling, isn't it? If you like that sort of thing, if you like that sort of holiday. I do, and uh, when you've been working all the time, it's nice to have a holiday where you can just sit by the pool and read a book, unwind. And that is the hope. So, but until we're actually on our way to the airport... I don't really think it's going to happen yet. I think because it's been cancelled twice before. It's almost like hopefully third time lucky. So, you can see how we're going. 
So we get a nice thick wreath. So this one to the side. the berries at the front obviously yeah so this isn't as pink as the lovely one that was in that gorgeous picture but I, I saw that and remembered that we had these berries down the road so I thought oh we could do a similar one mine would be a lot more rustic than that but I like rustic anyway the last one was very pink with all the silk flowers in so it's nice to do one a bit more a bit more rustic so this time we're going in the middle Actually, I'm going to go, got some nice berries there, so I'm going to go slightly down a little bit. I don't want to hide all those lovely berries that I've just put there. So just, just do what you feel looks good. You don't have to be, you know, 100% uniform with it. But generally it's a flat one, a side one, and then an inside one, an outside one, and an inside one. It, it kind of works. This one doesn't want to go. And Kathleen, there we go. So we're just going around, still, still going around. I'm getting coming towards. I've got another. Where do you want to go? Look so this time we're going to go to the side. So just winding through. three times so you can see we're coming along now the next one will go on the inside on the outside morning Patricia so just try and wind it through your your nice loose bits of birch that you've got on the side enough so just wiggle it down through your birch sticks and nice birch ends and keep them so it's a bit more difficult with these uh, with these strands so maybe do it on it if, if you're first trying just do it on a plain a plain reed to start with my time point here this is my um sorry my time point i mean my i'm going to attach it to the attach it to my gate all right this one to the side I think 
so it might be a little bit short you'll see maybe I'll just put a bow at the top just for now but you can so that you can get the effect I'll see if I've got enough to make a few more so that you never really know I made that the what I made up 30 plus we did another three there that I showed you at the beginning so that was 33 um, 33 so it probably would take about probably almost 40 bunches so that's quite a lot it's quite a big wreath though this one it is quite a big wreath right, so this is the last bunch that I've got so I'll, uh, I'll dig in a few bits to finish it otherwise you could just cheat and put a bow or something but I like them to look the natural ones I like without bows really I suppose you could put a a hessian bow on it or something that'd be quite nice but things with hessian when it gets wet it uh, doesn't look too good so i don't think I'll do that. right okay so you can see we're a little bit short so that was 33 bunches that was 33 bunches so i'd say it's probably more of 40 bunches that you'd need to make it really so all my bunches are there Let's just make up a couple more bunches. What I've got left. I've got lots of this uh, amaranthus or whatever it was called. I wasn't sure what it was called, so I'll make a few more of those. So you always need more than you think you're going to use. So we'll do. Let's see if I've got enough for three more bunches here. That might be enough. Yeah, this grows down the lane, Eileen, so I'd go down there with you. <laughs> it's, a good it's very pretty. So, again, we've just had a little sprig of the Euonymus, without the feathers in it. Then a piece of uh, the ivy. And a little privet. Make these, these ones a bit bushier, then maybe it will be enough. So a bit of privet and a bit of the lovely fairy. I need the wire. Let's use this other wire. See what happened to the other wire? <laughs> it's got itself in a bit of a tangle, hasn't it? Anyway, let's do it. Let me fix that. Yes, I don't know quite what happened with this wire. Anyway. So I'll just secure it. One little bunch. A bit of ivy. A bit of the berries. Let's just pack these in nice and tight. <coughs> Morning Chris, morning Abigail, morning Michelle. This is looking good, thank you. Well, it would look, look nice when it's on my door. They always look nice when they're in situ, don't they? Nice making them though. Really nice making them. That's two bunches. Let's see if we've got enough to make three. And hopefully that will be enough. So one, two, three. I don't think I've got any either left now. I'll just use it for that. So you never ever have enough. I always calculate things and think, oh, that will be enough. And uh, sometimes I'm right. It's a nice bit of privet there, so I've got that here. So. Berries. As I put all these berries in now. What I've got left. And a little bit of wine. My tangled 
this. There's a bit more water on that one because it's hot. We do this one. <clears throat> It's very nice of you, Michelle. Well, I like doing them, so that's nice. So let's see if we've got enough of our three, our three bunches. So let's go back. <clears throat> so we're going on the outside of this one just to fill it in. There's some wires. Let's try them away. We'll go on the outside with this one to try and fill it out. The wire is attached with this one. So through the middle, it gets a bit tighter in the middle then obviously once you get to the end. One, two, three. This gets a bit more complicated when you get to the end because you have to sort of twiddle it through all your other, wind it through all your other foliage, otherwise you'll lose your shape when you started. So if you sort of wind it through, you just have to wiggle it, wiggle it through your other foliages. one here. So this one's going to be a bit more complicated because we've got the wire at the top as well. So I'll just try and go over that. Wind it down. You need to wind it down through your foliages at the top. I think we're going to need another one actually. So I'll make up a bunch with what I've got left. So you see what I mean? We probably need one more piece here. So I think we need one more piece here. So we just make up a mishmash of what I've got left. Got a lot of this uh, around this, so we'll use that. This is great because it's nice and bushy on there. And this is what it's going to need actually. I might just put this on the edge. Sort of bushy one then, and then that should be a bit of wire. Is it very good? I think. Okay. So hopefully this one will finish it off. So you can see. Right, 
and this is this one is always a bit more difficult because you've got to wind it right the way down through all of your foliages. Get your wire. Wind it down through, then wind it behind. Come down through behind. And sort of zigzag it through. The last one always is a bit fiddly. A bit more complicated. You get the gist of it anyway. I've got my little hanger on the back here, so I'm trying to keep that free as well. So I'm going through my hanger at the back. So I've got something left to hook. I've got my wire again. Let's bring the wire through. So I'm just going down in between. Just securing it. One more time. Just move it about. You could go down through the middle of it as well if you want to sort of separate it a bit so that it sort of fits in with the first one. You see what I mean? And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put an extra few little bits there because that's, that's annoying me. I think it, it needs another little back up there. This is what I say, you can sort of cheat. Don't really need to wire that bit in anyway, but that's going to stay there because it's at the top. Gravity will hold it down. your wire because I've got a little hanging hook on the back I'm just going to attach it to my hanging hook at the back there we go so that's I'm going to hang it up here for a minute just to see a little hook up here in my cupboard. To hang it up. Always hang it up and have a look and see if you're happy with the, the shape. If you're not, then you can always put a few little extra bits in at the side. And because you've got the twine, the um, the wreath that you made that we made at the beginning anyway, obviously we made that in another another video. But because you've got that, you can just poke any little. These are quite good. These, these are quite hard. These, so you can just put them in, and they will just fit straight into the wreath. So you don't have to wire all of these. If you've got a bit, and you think, oh, I could do with another bit there. It doesn't quite look even. So you can just place it in. If you can get it in, just wiggle it in till it takes. That's it. And then I just because um, I like my greenery to look a little bit. Um, Stand out a little bit. I'll just use my bee spray and it actually catches the berries as well. And then that just brings it alive. You can buy leaf spray um, in any um, garden centre, they sell it, or florist wholesalers sell it, just leaf shine. And it just brings everything alive. There we go. So that's our dried. Sort of autumn wreath, really. Autumn wreath. Okay, so I'll take a picture of it later, and uh, I'll, go, I'll I'll double check that name of the berry. Eileen said, I'm sure it's right. Um, let's go back so you can see it there. Okay. So hope you enjoyed that. And I say I won't be doing a um, live next week because I will be on holiday. Hopefully, touch wood. Touch wood. Touch wood. So um, I'll see you either in the weekend, the week after that, or it might be two weeks. We'll see. We'll see um, what's what's happening the following week. All right. So I'm glad to have a lovely weekend, everybody. And uh, 
have a lovely weekend and um, I'll see you in a couple of weeks Mr. Start will watch it again. Yeah, yeah, it's all on there again. Uh, the actual wreath, I didn't make the wreath this time, but I made the wreath on one of the um, previous ones, the ones with the silk flowers, um, the one that was on my door. It's, I've just literally taken it off my door. So I literally just used the wreath from the back for that. But we, we, I showed you how to make that before. So um, we just, uh, I've just attached the flowers to that. There we go. So hope you like that. I'm going to put it on my door now, and I'll take a picture. And have a lovely couple of weeks. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye. <laughs>